How can you profit from a recession? How can you profit from a bear market? Heck, how can you simply not get crushed under the wheels of this economic devastation that we are seeing right now globally? Well, that is exactly what I want to discuss with you in today's video. What is the situation with all these recessions coming or happening already in major economies? What should investors, you know, maybe not be investing or at least not expecting gains from? What investments tend to perform well during times of economic insanity? Remember, bear markets make millionaires. If you can survive, that is. My name is Lark. I make videos on investing. If you like that topic, then do make sure to subscribe to the channel. Leave a thumbs up button on this video. Also, make sure to sign up for my weekly cryptocurrency investor newsletter, Wealth Mastery. We talk about altcoins, NFTs, DeFi, tips, tricks, and more. Sign up for free using the link in the description. Okay, so what are the chances of a recession happening across, well, all the major economies, the US, the UK, the EU, well, the World Bank has warned that more interest rate hikes around the world could indeed trigger a global recession in 2023. And that's exactly what we're seeing right now. And they're currently calling the current economic landscape the steepest slowdown since 1970. And for reference, the 1970s were a bad time for the markets. We don't want to be making that particular comparison. The world's three largest economies, the USA, China, and the Eurozone, they have been slowing sharply. And the more we look at this, the harder it is to ignore these recession warning signs that keep on flashing. Let's talk about the USA first. Technically, the USA is already in a recession with negative GDP growth for the whole of 2022 so far. The Atlanta Fed is constantly out there revising their GDP predictions down for Q3 2022, as you can see in this chart here. Over in the UK, things are also looking rough, but uh, unlike the USA, the Bank of England has actually already signaled that, uh, yep, the UK is already in a recession. The UK's recession is predicted to last the entirety of 2023 as inflation forecasts continue to increase. It's even forecast that the UK's inflation could top 22% next year if energy prices continue to rise. That's crushing. That could put GDP growth at minus 3.4%. To make matters worse, the British pound has hit a 37-year low against the increasingly strong US dollar. That takes the pound all the way back to 1985, man. And while we have to wait and see just where inflation ends up topping out at, the fact is it looks like a long, deep recession is definitely on the cards for the UK. What about the rest of Europe? Well, the EU throughout 2022 has shown one of the biggest disconnects between inflation and interest rates which suggests that a lot of pain is still to come. So it's only in September that actually the ECB started raising interest rates above 0%, their first hike in actually 11 years. Now that's all going to cause a lot of pain. Barclays forecasts an EU recession in Q4 of this year that will last until the second quarter at least of 2023, which could cause a 1.7% decline in GDP across the Eurozone. Barclays has also predicted a bleak 2023 growth forecast for the EU. Germany minus 2.3, Italy minus 2.1, France minus 1.2, and Spain minus 1.6% GDP. So basically everything is pointing towards recessions across the board, except in China, where they will not likely face a recession just a big slowdown in growth, but still it's gonna be painful for the Chinese economy too. I just did a video outlining the China situation, so check that out if you're interested to know more. Now let's talk about what assets perform worst in a recession. So while recessions can either be short and sharp or long and deep, the fact is recessions do suck and no matter the type of recession, they do leave few places for investors to hide because everything tends to get smashed. When central banks move from money printing expansion times to money tightening environments, financial markets move from being risk on to risk off real quick. During times of uncertainty, there's no appetite for risk assets, unfortunately. Thus, the worst performing types of assets in a recession tend to be those that are, well, highly leveraged or potentially cyclical assets or highly speculative assets. And of course that includes 
crypto to an extent. Oh, the altcoin pain we've already seen and there could be more to come. Will there ever be an end? And of course, this also includes tech stocks. They're right in the same category, many of which are down so bad you might not even be able to tell a chart of a tech stock and a cryptocurrency coin apart these days. Sadly, I love all of those things but that doesn't change the truth of the matter. However, this bear market will provide generational buying opportunities on cryptocurrency coins. I will be stacking, I have been stacking, will continue to do so throughout the bear market. And yes, there's gonna be a nice little bear market rally, there's gonna be a chance to make money with airdrops and all that fun kind of stuff, but there will be no new mega rally for crypto for quite a while, so don't go expecting new high prices while this recession stuff is going on. So what assets perform best in a recession? Well, the first category is defensive stocks. And those are the, the kind that may not seem super attractive during a bull market, but in a recession, they're actually more likely to outperform the market and help potentially keep your portfolio afloat. Now, here are some examples of what I mean by this. So consumer staples as one. These are the companies that you can't live without, right? They include food producers, drink producers, household goods, personal products, even stuff like alcohol and tobacco. I mean, come on, hey, recessions and alcohol, the perfect combination, aren't they? Come on, everyone's been drinking their way through this recession. Anyway, companies uh, also include, to look at putting in a portfolio be brands uh, within them, such as like Johnson & Johnson, Procter & Gamble, Unilever. These are like the big, you know, household good providers, right? The household staple stuff. Then there's pharmaceutical stocks. The, the need for medical products or treatments doesn't go away during a slow economic period. In fact, it's something that's usually a priority for people, especially if you know you're drinking yourself into a stupor, your liver is going to need some help, right? Anyway, consumer health, big pharma, biotech, these are all areas to watch during a recession. Then of course, there's utility stocks, gas, electricity, water, fuel. These are among the safest assets during a recession. Again, people can't go without these things, right? They need to have that stuff. Another area of focus, of course, is dividend stocks, which is largely covered by those current topics. But in times of slow economic growth, income paying stocks are a nice way to increase your income or to reinvest back into more assets. Now, when looking at individual stocks for dividends, focus on healthy companies with no debt or low debt, preferably ones that do have big profits, that have strong balance sheets, and of course, a positive cash flow. And of course, you can always look at the blue chip stocks as well if you want to play it even safer. These are large profitable companies that are big enough and robust enough and profitable enough, most importantly, to survive any uncertain times in the global economy. Think stuff like Apple, Microsoft, Johnson & Johnson. These guys aren't going anywhere. You get the idea, right? Anyway, then of course we have real estate, which is getting trickier due to the rising interest rates. But remember, you can always, of course, invest in a REIT, that's a real estate investment trust, via your stock broker, which will let you get exposure to the property markets without that big, you know, multi hundred thousand dollar potentially capital expenditure. But if you can then actually own a property and rent it out, that will provide important cash flow. Of course, you can afford to do that. That can be used to take advantage of other opportunities that a recession provides, like buying cheap Bitcoin, for example. Remember, people always need a place to live in private rental sector demand around the world has never been higher, so there's definitely an opportunity in real estate. Therefore, your returns can offset the losses of your cryptos or stocks looking at real estate. And here's this crazy idea to fine art. Not particularly my cup of tea, but fine art has actually averaged returns of around 7% across the three most recent market crashes, during which the S&P 500 returned an average of minus 17%. Definitely not for everyone, but noteworthy that there are things outside of these traditional asset classes to invest in. Finally, let's just consider whether this is a time of risk or a time of opportunity. Well, this is kind of both a time of risk and opportunity. That's recessions and bear markets, right? The key to investing, though, it's all about risk management. Investors are going to be rebalancing their portfolios during this time, moving out of those riskier assets, moving into safer assets, heading into a recession where markets could get even worse than they already are. This is the time to also reassess your asset allocation to minimize potential losses and allocate capital toward the winners. Just remember that opportunities, they will keep presenting themselves when the time is right during this market. We don't know just how bad it's going to get yet, will be a shallow recession or a deep recession. Do the markets still have a lot farther to drop? And to be clear, many are still calling for a drop, including some of the world's most famous investors. So we may still have that big leg down if the bears get their way. And throughout this period, opportunities will continue to present themselves at different times. Don't be 
tuned out, pay attention to this stuff. For example, as interest rates go up, people may soon find that their homes and existing rental properties become too expensive. Those mortgages can be brutal, right? They may be forced to sell in some situation. That presents a buying opportunity for people who have cash to, of course, increase your cash flow, but gain a rental property if the markets fall lower, right? So this is going to present opportunities in the stock markets, in the real estate markets, in the crypto markets, without a doubt, there are already opportunities and they might get even better. Also, we will see growth stocks again becoming an attractive investment, given, of course, that they tend to rebound quicker than the more defensive stocks and all the dividend stocks, which move a bit slower in the markets. Crypto is going to, of course, also offer some incredible opportunities, and I'll be paying attention to that. You just need to make sure that you're investing in the right stuff, right? Focus on maybe what's safer in the crypto market, the layer ones such as Ethereum, Cardano, Solana, right? Those coins are going to run faster than Bitcoin. But of course, it's also a great time to be stacking more Satoshis, be buying more Bitcoin, which is exactly what I have been doing and will continue to do throughout the bear market. While these market conditions can be painful, I do see the opportunity here. And I'll be using these opportunities to improve my existing investment positions position myself for the next bull run, bringing down my cost basis and getting ready for those next big money making opportunities because they will come. The only question is when are they going to come? Anyway, just my two Stoshis for the day. Let me know your investing plan for this bear market down below in the comment section. Thanks so much for watching today's video and peace out till next time.